Hi everyone, welcome back to the Home Spa Beauty Podcast. I recently had the pleasure of chatting with Nicola Gunby, co-founder of My Revolution. Now this is an app that allows you to book beauty on demand. As I said to Nicola in her chat, I love that it's referred to as the Uber of beauty. And it was great to speak to someone who came up with an innovative idea partly based on some experience of some versions that came before it. But the key is the innovation. How do you innovate an idea and take it and expand it and move it further beyond your wildest dreams? And that's what Nicola has been able to achieve. So we'll talk about building a business from scratch, getting acquired, investing in global beauty brands, tech startup. If you're interested in business, if you're interested in beauty, if you yourself work in the industry, you might be a makeup artist or a beauty therapist, then I think you might find this very interesting. So I hope you enjoy my chat with Nicola, all about my revolution. Oh, Nicola, it's so good to speak with you today. I would love to know then all about how everything came about because you've had quite the story, haven't you? Yes, I have. Thanks so much for having me on the podcast. But yeah, it's been it's been a bit of a journey, to be honest. So yeah, I am um, a co-founder of My Revolution, which is basically a booking app and marketplace for freelance beauty professionals. So as a client, you can go on there and you can browse and book local professionals in your area um, and pay for them direct all on the app. Um, yeah, so it was my it was my personal idea for the whole um, business. But yeah, it started around, I'd say, three years ago now. Um, so me and my partner, um, we went traveling. So we didn't know what we really wanted to do. Both knew we kind of wanted to do something a bit different. Um, but we just, we had no idea. So we were like, let's pack our bags. Let's go on like a bit of a trip. So it was supposed to be three months, end up turning into three years pretty much um but yeah we booked a one-way flight to southeast asia so we were like traveling around thailand um vietnam cambodia bali and then we ended up in australia really just kind of out of the blue had some friends there um and before i went traveling on a whim i did a makeup course because i was like what am i interested in all my friends had gone to uni i tried the whole uni thing hated it so i was like love beauty love doing makeup so i was like I'll do a makeup course. I want to be a makeup artist. Um, so yeah, when I was in Australia, I thought maybe this is my time to kind of try it. We were there for two years. So I got all of my like kit shipped over and everything. And I just found it so difficult to get any work, especially because it was just me and Jason and then a few of our friends out there were like, how do you build your client base when you don't know anybody, don't have any connections out there? Um, I got pretty lucky in the end, like just through people meeting people word of mouth but I was like it'd be so much easier if there was a website and I could put my profile on people could book me direct and it sounds sounds so simple but I think I mentioned it to my boyfriend a few times just like I wish there was an easier way and he basically just said one day like why don't why don't we create it and I was like oh my gosh you're like crazy like how are we going to do this I have no experience in business no experience in tech anything like that um so yeah we just decided to go for it we knew we were coming back to the UK after two years um and again we just didn't want to kind of go home get a job get a house we knew we wanted something different especially because I think we'd seen opportunities in the rest of the world and like Australia and we loved our lifestyle there that we like we want to do something that's our own um so we never really planned to have a business together but it just it just kind of happened so I think the biggest step was us just saving loads of money to go traveling back home but we used some of that money to like buy a macbook and like to build a website so we were like really invested when we pretty much had nothing at the beginning um and we were traveling back home for three months again so like Sri Lanka Philippines Bali again um so we decided to start them we thought right we've got like three months with nothing else to do like why not just go for it so yeah we were basically learning how to like code a basic site on the way home sat on a beach kind of working on it and um, I think it took us around two months to get like all the business plan together and get like the website sorted and then we just launched it on a beach in Sri Lanka just after a few cocktails just as, as you do, as you do yeah 
um but yeah it went really well and like in the first week we had a few hundred signups and we were like we've really got a business idea here like we've got to make it work I think in the beginning we thought like we wasn't sure what it was going to be wasn't sure if it was going to work we thought we've got this idea let's try it um but yeah then we came back home and in a couple of months we had like a thousand so we decided to just go full-time on it just not get a job not do anything else lucky enough that we were like living at our parents so we didn't have that kind of expenses didn't have any like overheads or anything so we could just go for it um and then yeah that was before covid obviously Mm -hmm. covid had to take some time out um and then after COVID, yeah, we were looking for investment to grow the business. I think we've grown the platform to about 2,500 beauty professionals across the UK. Um, so we had some really good numbers behind us, a really good brand behind us. And yeah, we wanted to kind of accelerate it further. Um, but like we knew nothing about investment or nothing about how to grow a business. So it was all pretty new to us. Um, but yeah, so we went through that journey. That was like a three month process of like pitching your heart and soul away and then we got connected to Revolution Beauty so the founder Adam Minto um, and he just saw the benefit of bringing it in-house so using all of their infrastructure using their team their marketing everything they've built as a global company so far so yeah in the end they actually partially acquired 50 percent myself and Jason still have the other half and we're running it day to day but now we've basically rebranded and relaunched as my revolution which is what you see today um exactly the same concept as before just kind of super powered in the app version really that's amazing now <laughs> you when you're telling it it sounds so fantastic and glamorous because all of those lovely places you were I know how it feels when you're building a business and wow. I can only guess when you were pitching mm. just through experience there must have been times when people must have been so patronizing, oh, yeah. so negative. Yes. And look at what happened. You were able to prove them wrong. But yes. does anything, because we like to keep it real, does anything stick out when you were pitching, when you just thought, you don't get this and it's your loss? <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. That was probably the toughest part of the business journey so far, I'd say. Um, just because we were so new to it as well, we didn't really know anything about investment and how it all works so we went into it completely just I'd say a little bit naive which sometimes can be a good thing because you expect the best of everything don't you but a lot of the time it was I think we had meetings every single day for three months and I think 90 to 95 percent of them was a no a lot of them were either like constructive feedback like you're a little bit too early not the right fit but then we did have some and I think it was always kind of when I was on my own pitching as well. So they see a young woman in a beauty business. And I've been told that like beauty doesn't make any money. Like you're not going to get anywhere, like all of these things. And I was literally thinking like, hey, wait and see. But it's hard. Like it does kind of, does kind of wear you down a little bit Um, and it's bound to. But I think like just the resilience, I think having two of us as well and being in a couple obviously helped a lot but it was tough very tough and we had a few moments where we were like is this right because when people are constantly telling you no you start to think is it gonna work is it a bad idea are we doing the wrong thing so you've just got to be yeah so resilient I think that was one of the major kind of pivotal moments in the business and I think potentially in myself in my own like confidence um that kind of changed everything but yeah it was it was awful <laughs> but worked out for the better so. that's it you only need to meet that right person once that's right. it and the other thing everyone when they're starting either if it's your own business or even if you're starting in a new career yes I think most people are told they're naive or mm. you've still to learn what my take on that is if you haven't experienced something of course you're naive but that doesn't as you say I don't think that's a bad thing because how can you learn unless you go through the process for the first time so Mm -hmm. I always feel when someone says phrases like that you've still to learn you're very naive it might be true but I think they're making an obvious fact a negative of course if it's your first experience of something that always uh confuses me because they're almost taking your freshness as a negative when in actual fact you might be seeing things fresh eyes seeing it differently 
definitely but all the people that were saying that were kind of like older men in suits <laughs> they didn't understand the beauty industry they probably felt I wouldn't say intimidated but kind of like with a young female that wants to do well in business I think it was always that kind of stereotypical man in a suit that just just didn't believe it but I think they're the ones with all the power as well, which was so hard. Um, but yeah, we got there in the end, definitely. It worked and, now, and it's Adam that you're working with, is that correct? So yes. as you say, you're basically doing the day-to-day. Yes. Is it something then that was obviously a perfect fit because you each fulfill what the other is looking for to push this forward? Yeah, so obviously Revolution have done absolutely amazing in the product space, but I think he was looking for something different at that time, and so was Revolution as a whole. They actually just went public as well a couple of weeks before we spoke to him. So it was kind of like, I think it was a bit of fate, the time that we like spoke and got connected. Um, I mean, I was the one to just kind of randomly message him on LinkedIn, thinking that he's never going to reply, um, and he got back to us straight away, he wanted to take a meeting, but they're wanting to basically build like a professional community. So they have these millions of consumers, but they don't really have a professional community. So the idea is that when Revolution launch a product, we can send it out to our professionals. They can get real reviews, get content with it, use it on clients. So they're kind of like a little insider group, really. And yeah, I think it was it was obviously scary at the beginning because we just wanted external investment. And the thought of kind of rebranding and do it all as a whole was very scary to us and it wasn't necessarily what we wanted but then we saw the bigger picture that they've already built like an amazing global brand and also their infrastructure I mean hopefully at the end of the year we're going to be going into different countries and it's just going to be a lot easier because they've got all them things set up already Um, and yeah definitely just having the brand name behind us has helped us tremendously but yeah me and Jason are still running it day to day which we're part of all the exciting things it's still still a startup and we've still got our own mini like business but it's just a whole like new community now that we can tap into and I love um, the phrase the uber of beauty Yes. because um can you explain a little bit about that because I think it makes perfect sense but it's nice to hear it from yourself the vision yeah of course so I think when we were looking into this so much we noticed that there wasn't really wasn't really anyone doing what we wanted to do so there's obviously so many platforms that we're so used to using now like delivery uber airbnb you can just book something online amazon and it's here at the click of a button so it's just so easy for people to do things now um and we was like there's nothing really like it for the beauty industry um so we just wanted to build something which would be yeah like the uber of beauty so our professionals are basically the taxi drivers so they're around waiting for the bookings and then they turn up at your door and we do also do in salon bookings as well um and a big usp with our platform compared to others out there is that we let the professional like completely choose their profile, their services, their reviews, their prices. So basically like we're allowing them to market themselves in a way that they want to, rather than being like, this is who we are. Here's a set menu as a customer, you get one price and that's it. Um, and I think that was really important from what I learned as a makeup artist that I'd always want to kind of put my own price out there. I don't want to be controlled by someone else. So yeah, it was just, it was just figuring out how we take all these different platforms that have done so amazingly and turn it into something for beauty. And am I right in thinking that you can download the app or go on the website? Is it either or? And are yes. there differences? Yes. So as a professional, they have the app. So the professional, um, it allows them to like manage their diary, take deposits, cancellations, all of that kind of stuff. Because we found that was really important as well for professionals. But yeah, for the customer, they can search and browse on the web. So you can just go on there, have a browse, have a play around and book if you want to. Um, and then we have the customer app as well, which is exactly the same. It's just all in one place. And as well, if you have the app as a customer, you can live chat with the professional. Because we found a lot of back and forth in the beauty industry so like saying you're looking for a hairdresser you look on Instagram you don't know if they're free you don't know what their prices are you get lost in the dms and then you're constantly back and forth even after you've booked it's kind of like you're going through all these channels there's texts there's emails there's dms where people are sending you photos saying like what should I do beforehand what should I do after so with the live chat function you can do all of that in the app with your professional so it's just kind of covering all bases really That's great. And I would guess as well, you are providing the security for everyone because they're going through you. So 
Am I right in thinking that you can then be the go-between if necessary, clarify things, yes. just keep everyone clear? Yes, exactly. We're basically like the connector of a client and a professional, which will help hopefully become a long-term client to them. So I think, yeah, we've we've really used everything we've learned and I've learned as well as a make artist to develop a platform that's not only really catering for the professionals because they're the ones that are struggling with like no shows and cancellations and not being paid and all those kind of issues that they have but then also really looking after the client and trying to figure out what it is that clients kind of want in this day and age and what do you feel because I'm guess it'll change seasonally and as the app gets bigger and bigger what would you say is the most common request at the moment it's definitely makeup And I think that's because there's not really a platform out there for makeup artists. Um, There's obviously like Treat Well and Fresh, where they've done absolutely amazing in like the salon space. But there's no one that's really catering for those self-employed freelance professionals. And I think finding a makeup artist is potentially one of the hardest things to find. Um, So yeah, makeup's really big, but also nails is a really big one. We've got some amazing nail techs. Um, We've got like celebrity nail techs, celebrity makeup artists, influencers, all that kind of stuff. So it's really growing. But I'd say those two are the, yeah, the main service. And are most people requesting that the professional goes to them or is there a bit of a split? I would guess they want you to go to the house for convenience. Yeah, there's a bit of a mix. So I'd say bookings that we get um, through the app are mainly mobile ones. But then we also get professionals, current clients as well, booking in. So they use their booking link as a booking system. So they'll put it in their social media and stuff. So we get that kind of client as well and we can capture them too. Um, And a lot of them that do use it as a regular booking system do work from home or they will have like a home salon or a chair in a salon. Um, But we wanted to be really flexible with that because when we have the old platform before we were mainly just mobile whereas we were finding a lot of professionals were wanting to sign up that did work from home or did have a home salon or just wanted someone to come to them so we wanted it to be really flexible and as a professional you can choose both as well so it's the calendar is very clever they all work out like travel time and time in between bookings and all of this so that they can kind of manage everything in one place and do you find at the moment you've got a key client demographic or is it surprising you the ages and the profiles yeah so it's it's quite broad at the moment I mean it's predominantly female which is expected um an age range is like from 18 to 40 we're finding that with the younger ones they're more engaging on social media they're maybe just like browsing whereas we're finding like older ones the one place in the booking which makes sense because obviously the older you are the more disposable income that you have and the more likely you are to spend money on kind of treating yourself but we do have that younger demographic as well and I think it's just because of the brand and I think because of Revolution Beauty, we're going to get both sides of things. Um, we're kind of wanting to target that kind of above 25, 26 plus to 35. And do you have any particular professionals, any, again, demographic that it really suits them? Anyone? I'm thinking maybe people that are reasonably new to the industry. Is it a great way to build up their confidence, but also people that maybe had a career break? Or is it perfect for a variety of professionals yes definitely and one of the things we've been doing as well is partnering with beauty schools academies colleges universities so when they come off of their course and they're graduated they can come straight onto our platform so our platform is really good for building up that client base which is so hard in the beginning which I found so difficult Um, so allowing them to have something which they can come on and they can find clients in their local area and like build up their portfolio and but then yeah also people that are more established in their career because we found that a lot of people, even if they're pretty much fully booked, they're going to be open to having new clients. Everyone wants to get their name out there a little bit more. So even if it is just they have them a couple of spaces free on the weekend, they want to fill them. So we're kind of getting it from both angles, really. And are there any areas in the country so far that are really picking it up super quick? They might even have surprised you how quickly? Well, London's an obvious one, just because a lot of our professionals are in London and a lot of our customers. Um, But one thing that we found is really kind of, it's not superficial, but 
in like Liverpool, you'll see like spray tans being booked a lot and makeup, whereas in London, you'll see a lot of like massage and facials. So it's good to see the kind of demographics. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we found like patterns in different services and where they're being booked and especially different times of the year as well. Obviously, like when holidays come around, it's like waxing and like brows and stuff. And then I suppose it gets closer to Christmas time. It's more like party season. So everyone's wanting like their hair and makeup done for like events. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see like the stats and how different it can be throughout the year, but also, yeah, in different kind of areas I think that is it's so interesting yeah. I remember a few years ago it was um there was a perfume brand that were doing some sort of presentation that I was at and they were saying how the different areas had their yeah. different fragrances and they could tell by someone's accent that'll be your if I say pomegranate <laughs> noir you'll know exactly which brand I'm talking about and they were saying I could tell as soon as they spoke this would be their favourite fragrance because it tended to be the demographics. Yeah. They could tell whereabouts in the country you were, what your favourite fragrance basically would be. So as you say, it's fascinating, isn't it? It is, isn't it? I love, yeah, looking at all the data and everything and how it's, yeah, differentiating. And I think that's going to be something as we grow as well that will just be on a bigger scale. So about to pick yeah. out like different pockets of the UK and like what's being booked in all these different areas. So yes. And I'm guessing too, as trends change and mm -hmm. as new either new brands come up and people are using the brand within their treatments or even within their makeup yeah. that might tap into again why people would want to book professionals on your app because they'll want to know does that person work with that brand I'm thinking again if it's a facialist and they want to know what do you use it could be a simple communication do you use a brand that I want can you be can they be with you in a matter of hours can it be that quick Yes, yes, definitely. So it's good for those last minute bookings as well. So we let our professionals kind of do their calendar, like when they're open, when they have breaks and stuff. And then as a customer, you look at their profile and you can see exactly when you can book in. Um, so yeah, it's really flexible. And it's in the UK at the moment. Is yeah. it already reaching out to other territories or is that very much part of the plan? Yes, so part of the plan. So we want to kind of tackle the UK first and then move into different countries. I know we've got ideas of Germany, Poland, maybe Australia or America, which is exciting. But yeah, hopefully once we've conquered the UK and I think towards the end of the year, we're going to start our kind of like expansion plans into different countries. And then that is so exciting. But again, as you mentioned earlier, we can't ignore covid Oh, yes. What exactly did that do for business? Because the whole process of booking was just wiped out. Oh, yeah, completely. I think we'd only had the business maybe around six months when COVID hit. Obviously, so unexpected. Like no one ever thought this would ever happen in our lives. Um, so, yeah, it was difficult because we had to shop for... I want to say like eight months, maybe. I, I can't remember. But I think beauty was one of the last ones to come back on, wasn't it? And it was really sad, actually, to see how many beauty professionals maybe got another job or like they had to completely stop and like pivot their career just because of COVID. Um, so it was sad to see there were so many people that weren't kind of getting help. And I think the grant system and the whole funding system was, wasn't really catered to the beauty industry. So a lot of people did, yeah, leave their business. Um, for us, it was, you've got to see the silver lining and everything, haven't you? So it was good for us because we were so early days that we could kind of take that time to figure out things that we maybe hadn't thought about. And that's when we decided like we need to get investment in the next few months as well. So it was kind of like, it just gave you so much time to think about things and plan things. Um, but yeah, we were out of business for maybe eight months and then afterwards was pretty tough I think everyone was quite skeptical because we didn't know what was going to happen constantly going in and out of lockdowns as well so but we found a lot of although a lot of professionals were dropping off we were getting a lot of new ones that maybe they got furloughed in their career and they wanted to take up a new skill so they did like an online course or something and I think as well I think there's a stat and it's around 70 percent of salons actually shut down through covid mm -hmm. which meant a lot of them either went self-employed or they did like a home salon themselves or they started mobile so i think that was really good for our platform because you don't have any overheads when you're mobile or freelance you don't have like rent to pay you don't have staff to pay you don't have all of that so i think a lot of people realized we don't really need a salon and as well, on the customer side of things, I think people were more open to people like coming into your home because um, we like exercised from home, we worked from home, we got everything delivered to home. And so we're doing everything at home. So I think the thought of 
one person coming into your home that's fully protected as opposed to you going out getting on the tube going into a salon where you could be contaminated with so many people I think on the customer side of things we saw a massive shift as well that is such a good point and it leads me on to and I can guess what some of the answers will be your business wins if you like and also the business lows when you're like oh and I can guess that might have been a business low so what was that what do you think of as a business win maybe something that almost took you by surprise and you thought well didn't expect that but that is amazing yeah um, I think it's been loads to be honest I think because we were been so flexible in terms of what we want to do I think when we first started we thought we were just going to be a booking platform where you can book appointments um, but as we kind of realized there's so many other industries you can kind of work with um, so we partner with like hotels and do like in-room services we partner with like corporate clients doing like wellness days we go into like buildings where we set up like little pop-ups and stuff so I think and yeah, the event side of things. So I think that like, we didn't really, we didn't, we weren't too tunnel vision, if that makes sense. So like when these opportunities were popping up, we thought, oh, this is really good. Like we need to take advantage of those. Whereas I think in the beginning, we never thought that would even be an option. And I think with beauty, it kind of, it goes with everything. So like fashion goes really well with beauty. So we've got a really exciting partnership coming up soon with like a fashion brand. Um, so yeah, it's just figuring out where, we can insert our business into all these different industries, which was, yeah, so unexpected, but it's worked for us for the better because as well as gaining more exposure, we've gained like new clients from it and built like new relationships. So yeah, that's always been an exciting one. And I think that leads me on. You've already hinted. What are the (laughs) plans for say the next year or two? Um, Do you have anything in sight, any ideas? You've already hinted at them. They sound really exciting. (laughs) Yeah, so we've got lots of exciting partnerships coming up, which is, yeah, which is really great. Um, I think in terms of the business, just growing it as much as possible, um, getting our own team members, which is really exciting. I think we've got... 2000 professionals on the platform currently so obviously that's growing every day organically which is amazing so by the end of the year we want to be hitting like that kind of 7000 8000 mark um but yeah just growing it as much as possible obviously the potential of going into other countries i think with our business it's been very much like a hockey stick so it starts off slow and then as it picks up it kind of skyrockets and um, so we're at that point now which is it's crazy but it's yeah so exciting um what else have we got going on we just want to be everywhere and do everything I mean next year we've got lots of exciting events planned and going to be at lots of events as well I think there's nothing better than that in-person kind of atmosphere and we're so used to everything virtual now but I think like in-person events is definitely like where the magic happens so we've got lots of exciting things coming up next year it sounds it's so innovative what you've done like you say you've taken an idea that some people will have implemented previously and you've just ramped it up a level and you've made it about as convenient and dare I say it as well safer than just uh, randomly as you say contacting someone who you're not sure about and are the pictures really genuine Mm. does this makeup really look like this (laughs) Yeah, you take it. I think that's it's a really great idea. So just to finish off, then, can you tell everyone that your socials and where how easily it is to search for the app? Do you just type in my revolution? Is that all you type in? Yes, so our website is www.my-rev.com. Instagram is just myrev, so super easy. If you want to download the app, it's available on App Store and Google Play Store. Just type in myrev or my revolution. It will come up and yeah, you can download, get browsing, get booking. Um, But yeah. Well done. (laughs) From going on that holiday, I say holiday, did you have to do a little bit of work on that holiday? So we'll call it... (laughs) yes holiday-ish but from <laughs> that initial idea to now I know it's honestly, crazy well done and thank I cannot you. wait to see where it leads and thank, thank you very much for talking to me that's okay thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure